That's a fish, it's man. A bluegill. Yeah, you caught him. You caught a bluegill. He just, he just he ripped him. He ripped him to another dimension. Hey boys and girls, welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the one, the only, the original Texas Fly Fishing Report. As you can see from that little snippet at the beginning, we try to throw some humor in here, try to keep things light. We don't want to get too heavy into fly fishing. This is still a sport. It's supposed to be fun. Tune in to see how that little piece turns out at the end of this video. Well, <clears throat> we're approaching, and I'm going to be all over the map today because, uh, the, of course, I don't have a script or anything like that, so it's just kind of off the top of my head, and, and uh, the top of my head is being buzzed by mosquitoes right now here in North Texas, so it's, it's a little tough, a little tough. Um, so, I, like I was saying, we're right around the fall solstice, I believe I said that, and the weather is exceptionally hot here in North Texas after a little bit of teasing with some cool fronts back uh, a few weeks ago it heated up again and I'll start locally with the the local fishing fly fishing which for me I concentrate as a guide on fly fishing for carp on Lake Ray Roberts here in North Texas it's about 10 miles north of Denton Texas Denton's about 30 miles north of Dallas but it's all one big conglomerate now a lot like Houston really um, well worth the trip to go to Ray Roberts on your own uh, because it's such a beautiful and, and a pristine, still pretty much pristine lake, of course man-made, but pristine. And um, as a matter of fact, if you check out the next issue of Texas Parks and Wildlife magazine, it's, it's the state magazine about Texas parks and Texas wildlife. Um, the cover story is on Lake Ray Roberts. That will be coming out at the end of September 2016. It is on Lake Ray Roberts and I happen to have the cover photograph on that. So check it out. I've got a photo on the inside but they didn't tell me what it was, you know. Um, so you'll have to kind of look on the inside. Now it will be a surprise to me as well as to you as to what the photo I have on the inside is. But definitely um, check out the next issue, October Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine. So things around here have been exceptional. That's why I haven't had a video in a while. I appreciate you guys subscribing even though I haven't done a video in a while. Um, the reason is I've been fishing a whole lot. It's been the best carp season ever. And it's been a season of recovery for me, of course. It was a year ago now, almost. I'm going through these anniversaries of a year ago. I was in treatment for cancer and uh, throat cancer from HPV virus. And um, so in the last few weeks, I really started feeling really, really good. Been on the polling platform, polling a lot. And uh, it's been really a, a, you know, a challenging comeback. Uh, my treatments ended back in November. So again, these anniversaries will be coming and going right now. But um, of course, I'm all clear from cancer. Thank, thank you to my doctors and the good Lord above. But uh, anyway. I want to encourage any of you men out there that might have any kind of strange things going on with your throat or some swelling, you know, in your lymph nodes in your throat. I'm, I'm not going to hide from the, from preaching on this and, and tell you to uh, go to your doctor and get it checked out. It, it, it kind of presented itself like when you have a cold and these lymph nodes swell up, but it was just this one side and it didn't go away and it didn't go away and I got in trouble with my mom. She made me go to the doctor and. And then it was a big old snowball rolling down a hill after that. Ended up, you know, a lot of lost time, of course, and but uh, it's got more life on the end of it, I guess. So I've been fishing a lot and working a lot, and so I'm trying to balance all these things and and uh, you know get some fly fishing done so that I can tell you guys it's great. It's been the greatest year ever for carp. I've caught the most carp in one day that I've ever caught on Lake Ray Roberts, and I've caught the biggest carp I ever caught this time this year on Lake Ray Roberts 2016. A lot of people think the season's over just because the summer's over and that could nothing could be further from the truth. Although the sun does arc down and start to fall in the sky and makes makes you know sight casting and sighting fish a little more difficult. Days are shorter that makes it more difficult. Um, it's still there's still tons of fish out there and tons of shots to be had. I took a guy out last weekend and I must have set him up on 50 to 80 shots so 
it's all there it's all on it's all good you know it's just like uh, you know once the Orvis uh, folks discovered carp they it's like they invented it and they they're talking about longer seasons in one of their latest articles and this that, and the other well I knew that the season could be longer just because of where we are and the way the fishery is well this is one of those places regardless of what you're hearing from anybody else or Orvis or any of that stuff this is the place a destination to go to for a carp all through the fall we'll probably catch our last fish sometime in late october so that's that's pretty amazing and if the weather doesn't ever cool off and, and there's no telling what's going to happen so as we move away from north texas you know it stopped raining a long time ago i haven't had a report since july and back in july they were still bringing the water down at the lakes that's all done everything's stabilized um, the rivers are stabilized most of the lakes are perfect conservation pool level right now here east north and east of the i-35 corridor if you think of it in those terms out west there's still some low lakes but still many of the lakes in texas have come up a whole lot work your way down the rivers down to the other lakes through the system to the coast finally there's not this great influx of fresh water so the salinity is balanced out and I, it's hard to tell whether it's just the conservation efforts or the, the actual fishery itself. I'd, I'd like to think that it's the conservation measures that Texas Parks and Wildlife is taking on speckled trout, specifically specks, that uh, is creating a situation where I've never seen so many speckled trout being caught in so many different places. Of course, the size will vary, but I've seen a number of guys catch their personal best speckled trout this year and that goes on basically now now that people's knowledge knowledge is getting better and better 12 months a year and one other thing I've seen via Facebook posts and things like that because I just have to glean because nobody's calling in uh, is that full reds are being caught in the summertime here in Texas on fly so take that for what it's worth uh, that was Port O'Connor, my favorite place on the whole coast. And that is a piece of news that you're going to have to chew on for a while because that is, uh, we're on the tip of the iceberg of learning a whole bunch of new things, I think, about bull redfish, redfish in summer. And I actually got some plans for wintertime speckled trout um, that might just blow your mind as well. So we'll see about that kind of hard to know where I'll be able to get away, when I'll be able to get away, and things like that, um, because there's a lot going on. I mean, this, if this was all I had to do, that would be great. You could help me with that, and here's how. Go to www.texasflycaster.com. That's the website. You go there, read a few stories, enjoy yourself. Everything that you hear here is done in greater depth, and longer in words, on the Texas Flycaster website guarantee and you can do a search there and you can find years I'm, I'm almost 10 years into the website now there must be close to 30,000 words we're talking a novel's length a serious novel's length of words not all of them are mine sometimes I reprint things that come to me and I'll be glad to reprint anything you've got regarding events or anything like that but Texas Flycaster website is where it's at so make sure you check that out as soon as you can I think there'll be a link on the bottom and uh, you can definitely uh, go there and find out a lot more about these things in detail. You can also book my guide services there. There's things about skiffs. There's all kinds of information there on the Texas fly fishing scene as broad as I can get. There is a great tournament coming up this, uh, this weekend. It is this uh, carp tournament in Houston in the Bayou City. Um, I think it's called the Bayou City Carp Tournament and uh, there's a story on that on my website it's gonna be a great event first inaugural event should be really good it's for those of you who don't want to kill carp you want to catch them and release them and record them for the contest check out the rules on that they're pretty broad you can fish anywhere you don't have to fish just in the bayou so uh, anywhere that you can get in for the for the actual turning in of the, the images you can fish there uh, very cool very 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 cool there's another tournament coming up and that's next month it's the Lydia and Flymasters tournament and that is down <clears throat> in Port Aransas my second favorite place on the coast
and that tournament is for a good cause casting for recovery and of course I think that's a good cause and um, the rules and everything there are pretty typical it's a great term it's been going on for years same people have been running it it uh, I think the location changes from time to time it's probably changed again this time but well worth the the journey to do that tournament and for a good cause I think the entry fee is like $65 and you will have a great time I've done that tournament two or three times and uh, just not going to make it this time but guys have a great tournament enjoy that I think it's going to be fantastic and I really appreciate the work you're doing for casting for recovery anyway uh, this is what's going on right now I'm sure I'm leaving things out I just really felt like with all you new subscribers coming in I'm sure some people have unsubscribed going this is the most boring thing in the world and he never he never does new videos well I, I almost never do new videos right now because I was so busy fishing and that's a pretty good excuse if you ask me um, you will uh, see some more videos as things slow down uh, you will uh, also see uh, some stuff probably from Oklahoma. I'm, I'm getting tempted a little bit to go back into the trout thing. I kind of left that years ago, but I'm kind of feeling pulled back into it. And that is Beaver's Bend Broken Bow. And so getting tempted by that, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, it, I've got all this cold weather gear that just sits around and small rods and things like that. So I'm kind of wanting to pull them out and give them another go. And that fishery has been so distorted and, and well, it was destroyed now it's just distorted uh, by the floods and I haven't seen it since the floods so I want to go kind of document the the changes there and see if I can bring you guys some serious information about Broken Bow Beaver's Bend and maybe get some folks up there to go out on guided trips I'm still debating on that but I think it's a kind of a no-brainer to offer guided trips in Beaver's Bend on the weekends and, and see how it turns out the only other thing I can think of off the top of my head is keep your eyes on where you're going when you go to the coast there is a red tide going on on the Texas coast but I think it's fairly isolated down near um, Matagorda and just a very very small area but there is a website on, on the Texas Parks and Wildlife um, there's a website page on the Texas Parks and Wildlife site that uh, gives updates on red tide if it, you gotta know before you go in Texas because uh, it, it, that would ruin everything for you if that was the place you were going to go and it had red tide. Um, otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Give me a call if you want to take advantage of this fantastic hot, hot weather here in September and going into October in North Texas because that keeps those carp on top and feeding pretty well. And that's what I'm here for, to get you guys out there, tell you what I know about fly fishing, hopefully draw some of you into this cult and uh, I hope that uh, you guys have a great uh, I don't know it might be a week or two before I put another one of these on hopefully it will be a lot sooner than July since the last one I did uh, let me know if you're fishing somewhere let me know how it's going and let's get back and see if he ever gets his little fish out of that bush <laughs> I've got my eye on that fish though. If you ever get loose, I got my eye on that fish. He's departing. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it, and we'll be glad to get it on the report.